What's up, guys? How you doing? Good. Well, Tony Chase Brown had a big day. Um, just what were he and the offensive line able to do so well? You know what? We were uh, uh, talked about all week. Coach did. We were trying to make sure that we made that a Big Ten football game. Uh, and then Charlotte came in and knew that they were playing a, a Big Ten opponent right there. Uh, I thought our offensive line did a great job of getting a body on a body, staying on a body. What Coach B talks about straining all the time, a little extra at the end, which turns the 10 and 15 yard runs into 30, 40, and 80 yard runs. Uh, the downfield blocking by the wide receivers, uh, just everybody bought in on what we were trying to get done in that game. What does Chase being back do for your offense? Well, he brings back some, some juice there, obviously some fresh legs. I mean, he's fast, uh, he runs physical, uh, and he's played a lot of football. You know, whether it's even not just the running game, but the passing game, just everything that we do, it's a kid that's played a lot of football at that position, and that brings a lot to the table. So very excited to have him back in there. Obviously, he had a great day and, and super happy for him, the O-line, the offense, everybody. You mentioned several times just didn't have the guy that you – the staff considered the number one for several games. Was the run game against Charlotte maybe what you had envisioned you know, it could be yeah. with everything working? Yeah, I mean, we, we felt like we had a matchup where, where we had a favorable matchup running the football up front uh, with, with, with our line against their defensive line and their front seven. Uh, our running backs getting into their secondary and, and breaking tackles and, and what we felt could happen right there, but we still had to go out and do it and uh, give our kids credit. They started from the get-go and, and, and went through the whole game with that attack in mind and, uh, and pulled out a really good run game right there on, on, on a good Charlotte football team. Tony, when you to face a Wisconsin team that's leading the country in rush defense, how important is it to stay committed to the run game even if the results early on in the game aren't what you want? <clears throat> well, I think when you run the football, you run the football, and, and you got to stay committed to it. Um, obviously, you're going against an, an elite defense. Uh, I think they're number one in the country in rushing. Number, they're in the single digits in a lot of stuff. Uh, they're very good defense, uh, experienced. A lot of players have played a lot of games. Um, very good up front, especially the front seven, and then how they feel in the back end in the run game. So uh, we got to find ways to run the football, different ways. Um, you know, we got to be creative there. But at the end of the day, we're also we got to be what we are and 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 be committed to it. And sometimes a two-yard run is, is not a bad play and just keep stacking and trying to get ourselves in those third medium to third manageable situations. We've seen, obviously, four of the offensive line spots have been pretty steady when healthy with Julian and your three super seniors. That fifth spot, it's looked like it's been Jack and Alex. What are you seeing out of that spot there? You know what? I think that's getting better. You still got two guys right there. Pills, Pill played a lot of the snaps in the game right there. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a bigger body, which, which is good, but uh, that doesn't always mean that he's the best person in there, but he did a good job in the game. Keep developing him, keep bringing Jack along right there because we got to have depth. And, uh, you know, the more we can get to where we got five guys out there, solid guys playing, I, I think the better you are, you know, up front. So if we can get that fifth guy right there and feel good about it, that'll be a good thing. We've seen a couple of those guys line up as tight ends, Alex last week, and then Josh Cruz this week. What do you guys like about that look? Well, we're just adding some bigger bodies in there. You know, we don't, we, we've got a decent amount of tight ends, but we, we haven't been super healthy there. Uh, we, you know, Daniel's not a, a big blocking type of tight end, so sometimes we want to go what you call a 13 personnel, but we want it with a bigger body. So we're going to add another offensive lineman in there. Uh, and Cruz Ward, uh, I don't even know what number, 95, I think. Was that it? Yeah. yeah. So got an eligible jersey on right there and did a great job for us. And it was great to get a true freshman in there and get him some reps. Tony, what does uh, Chase's ability of performance do for Josh? Because, you know, Josh held his own against Purdue, but how does that help his development now to have that comfort? I think Chase is huge for Josh because it's all the little things. And still, Josh had some good football games, no doubt, carrying the football. But you go back and look at the film, and there's a lot of things he's still doing as a freshman that we got to get cleaned up, not only in the running game but in the passing game. And just for him to have somebody like Chase in there in front of him that really does things right most of the time, uh, you can tell he's played a lot of ball, is huge for a freshman running back. What are your impressions of how Brandon played on Saturday? You know what? BP did everything we asked him to do. There's three or four passes out there now he'd love to have back because he, I think, whatever, we threw four, 80 yards or something. I don't pay that much attention to the stats, but somewhere in there. And you, you're talking three catches, three receptions, and that might be 250 yards and three more touchdowns. So uh, we just got to keep pushing there. You know what? We haven't, we haven't struck it like we need to on some of those big ones and hit three or four of them in a game. Uh, they're there. We're going to keep calling them. Uh, 
you know, we just he, he's going to hit them. I mean, I, I feel good about it. He just he, he'd love to have three or four of those passes back. Is that just a just getting used to the wide receivers type of things? What, what do you think? Just a little bit. That's missing? You know, I don't know. We, we're going to try and you know do a little bit better job of making sure we get more of those repped a different way in practice. Just try and change it up, help him right there. Uh, getting used to a guy like Deuce, you know, a guy like Deuce, you almost can't throw it too far. Whereas everybody else, you got to throw a little bit different. You got to know who's out there, understand the coverage, and, and how far you can take them across the field. And and I mean, we're just we're, we're that close on those, or or we're in here talking about him throwing for four touchdowns and a whole bunch of yards. And so uh, I I know we're going to get there. It just didn't happen on Saturday the way we wanted on every play. Tony, you said a couple of times we're close yeah. with, with Brandon. You, you put a lot of faith in him, obviously, the last three weeks yep. with him. What, what is giving you the faith that he will have that breakthrough and make those? I just I, I feel good where he's at with everything. I, I spend the most time with him, yeah. whether it's in meetings, practice, everything that we're doing, um, you know, out there for all the individual periods. You know, I, he's our starting quarterback right now, and I, and I feel good where he's at. Can Brandon make a few more plays? Yeah, I mean, everybody in the stadium can see that we could have made a few more plays there, and he'll be the first to come in here and tell you, that, that I, I could have made a few more plays there that would have made a huge difference in that game and points and, and how much we won by. Uh, but you know what? That happens to quarterbacks. And uh, I, I'm excited about Brandon. Can't wait for to watch him against Wisconsin out there and get another opportunity. And I know he's going to start clicking on more of those. But he also had some really good plays out there. The one to Daniel right there that he smoked in the end zone. Uh, I mean, that was, you know, I just keep telling him, those are the kind of throws right there, getting on your front foot and driving it. And, and he, he's going he's gonna to flip the corner on a couple of these big ones soon. Okay, watching the film, um, the Darian Lowe looks to me like he's having one of his best seasons here at Illinois. Are you seeing the same thing on the film? Yeah, Velo played his best game on uh, on Saturday, uh, taking care of everything he needed to in pass protection, getting a body on a body, really being physical up front in the run game. Uh, you know, excited where all those guys are starting to develop, but he definitely had his best game of the year. He's been known kind of a, as a uh, good in pass pro, but he's, has he taken any, another step in the running game? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they really have no choice with what we're doing, and, and, I, and they're excited about it. You, you very rarely run into offensive linemen that don't enjoy run blocking. So even though he might, maybe he's a better pass protector or was in the past, uh, he, he's, he's very excited about how we're run blocking. He's doing a great job with it. And, and I think he's getting better just like all, the, all five of them are getting better every week. Tony, Brett said after the game on Saturday that he has gotten aggressive with Brandon in practice. Can you verbalize what that looks like or what that feels well, like? Well, I mean, it's, you know, uh, you know, Brandon maybe misses one here or there. And, and Brandon's got a certain type of personality. It's just who he is. You guys have all spent time with him. And, uh, and Coach has just uh, got taken it to a little bit another level there on him and practiced a couple times. And, and I and I think it's awesome, you know. I mean, uh, Brandon gets fired up on it in his own little way. Sure. You don't see it very much, but I can tell when he's getting excited. And and uh, you know, to be honest with you, I think he kind of likes it when Coach gets on him, and and he puts he's putting as much pressure on him. And and I think he feels good about it when Coach B's on him. The head coach is, you know, right there to kind of squeeze the squeeze it on him. I think Brett had said something after the game about coming midway through last week with suggestions for targets for certain guys. How'd that conversation go? And it's, what, what's the balance you guys have with trying to draw those up to get the right amount for different guys? Well, sat down with Coach B and it's just like, hey, here's here's our running backs that are gonna play a lot. Kind of how many runs we kind of feel like we should be probably getting in a game of 70 to 75 snaps in a game. Um, you know, here's probably how many passes in our offense are we, we're going to throw. And then, all right, who do we want to get these throws to? You know, and you've got guys like Isaiah out there. You've got two big tight ends we're going to try and target. You know, we tried to get the ball to tight ends a little bit more this week. We had uh, one drop. We had one miss misread right there. Uh, got a touchdown to Daniel. But kind of keep moving forward on kind of our game plan of how to get the ball to the people we want, you know, whether it's a throw game or the run game. Is some of that just getting used to your personnel and kind of where they excel and what to do once you get into games? Slowly? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you start all of a sudden, you've got a freshman running back like Josh McCray, and he starts doing some of the things he's doing. You're like, okay, we need to start getting him the football more. You got a guy like uh, Chase Brown come back from injury. Obviously, you know, you need to get him the football. And then just watching guys like Isaiah and those two tight ends run around. And then Casey Washington, I can't say enough about him. I mean, what he did for us on third down, especially just in that first drive right there. He's our best wide receiver at one-on-one -on -one combat out there when it's tight, tight coverage and getting separation and fighting for the football. He was awesome in the game. I wanted to ask you how he has grown since you first got him back to campus in the summer before the season. Well, I didn't know Casey, so I've never met him before. Um, so everything that I've known, I love Casey. He does a great job. He comes out every day. He goes full speed. He does everything we ask him to do to the best of his ability. And you know what? When you throw the ball in his catch radius, he usually comes up with it. So 
I can't say enough good things about Casey Washington. Tony, is there such thing as a, to borrow from baseball, an innings limit or a pitch count on a running back, especially like Josh? He's a bigger guy, but he's also a freshman. Yeah, you know what? I think the only thing with, with freshmen sometimes is sometimes the, the game maybe at certain points maybe gets a little big for him or whatever. You just got to be careful right there. Uh, but, you know, Josh is a special freshman out there. You know, he had the fumble in the game. Um, and I hated it for him, and it was awful. I hate turning him football over, especially in the red zone. But you know what? I told him after the game the next day, I said, if that fumble changes the way that you hold the football and, and your ball security and you're high and tight with the ball, if that, if that helps us the rest of the year, that fumble was worth it, and we'll learn from it and get better from it. So, you know, just can't say enough good things about Josh. He's such an incredible talent at freshman running back, and it's awesome to have Chase back to be able to kind of help him there. And between the two of them, very excited. And you spoke on Wisconsin's run defense. What else do you see about their defense, either as a whole or in the passing game? I mean, they're just they're a really good defense. I mean, you know, they've had the same defense coordinator now for a while. They have a system. They've recruited to that system. You, you can tell that they have players that have played a lot of plays. Uh, they don't get out of position. You know, if they're supposed to be there, they're there. If they're supposed to make the tackle, for the most part, they're making the tackle. If it's cover three, they're free safeties and center. I mean, you know, they, they've got a really good defense, and, and they're good up front. They're great in the run. They, they, might not, they might not be as ranked as high in the pass because what people do, I think, a lot of times is, is decide, hey, we can't run the football on these guys, so we're going to throw the ball more. So they might give up a few more yards there, but you know, don't, don't, get that, don't mistake that. I mean, they, they play great defense, run and pass. Tony, Brett, uh, last week talked about managing your quarterback position, how it's different than everything just because the attention it gets, the, the criticism it gets, the, the praise it gets as well. How do you approach that position knowing your background playing the position, coaching the position for so long. How, how important is that or how different is it? I mean, I try really to approach it the same way every week. You know, like we go in on Sundays and and we're going to learn from our mistakes on Saturday. We're going we're gonna to fix them and we're going to get better for the next Saturday, whether we win or lose. And uh, trust me, I love winning and I hate losing. But I, I think at the quarterback spot, you got to come in after a game, whether you win or lose, and we got to go look at those plays and we got to fix the ones that need to be fixed talk about the ones, the good ones and the bad ones, and move on to the next week so we can get better right there. Because the whole goal is for them to just keep getting better every week. Because if your quarterback's getting better every week, you're getting better as a team. If I'm not mistaken, maybe your time at Minnesota as a coordinator lined up with Jim Leonard as a player at Wisconsin. Did you guys, do you remember going up against I, him? Yeah, I can't remember what, I was there for eight years. Yeah. I mean, do, you, do you remember like game planning for him? What made I remember he was a really good player. <laughs> you know, I mean, he was, he was, a, he was back in the back, and you had to know where he was at because he, he was just a very smart player, and I'm sure it's the same as him as a, as a coordinator, very intelligent. Uh, he, he seemed to be able to decipher plays very fast and make plays on the ball, got, the, got his hands on the ball a lot, um, and they had some really good teams back then also. Tony, as many years as you've done this as a play caller, how, how often are you calling something to set something up three, four, or five plays down the line just to give them this look? Uh, I think you're always doing that as a play caller, but really it, it, it all starts today. You know, with us in there, we're, we've been sitting in there all morning as a staff, and it's, it's trust me, guys, it's not just me. Calling plays is overrated, I think, a lot of times, because a lot of the stuff that's done in play calling is done on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. It's mapped out kind of how we're doing things. I'm not saying, you know, a play caller doesn't go off the whatever here and there and, and sure. do some things, but a lot of the stuff that we do is done as a staff in that, in that meeting room. Now just one more about Kip Ryman. I mean, he seems to really come into his own as a run blocker, as a tight end. What have you observed about him in the time you've known him? Tip's just getting better. I mean, he, he's, you know, Coach B talks about stacking days all the time, and, and Tip's the epitome of that. You know, he, he came as a walk-on. He's earned a scholarship. Now he, deserve, he deserved the scholarship. And, and he's, he's in our, our three tight ends right now. And really, if we're going to go what I'd call a heavy 12 personnel, with, you know, he's, the second, he's the other tight end in the game. So Tip keeps stacking days, keep getting better. He, you know, he's got things he needs to work on, and he works on them every day. And, and you know, he's, he's awesome. I love Tip. Good. Appreciate it, guys.